In, co in compliance with the Open Public Meetings Law, I wish to state that on February 7, 2020, the notice of this meeting of the Upper Township Committee was posted on the official Township Bulletin Board, mailed to the Cape May County Gazette, the Atlantic City Press, the Ocean City Sentinel Ledger, the Herald Times, and filed with the Township Clerk. Tonight's meeting is being video recorded up until the closed session portion of the meeting and will be available on UTTV Channel 97 and on the Upper Township website. I hereby direct that this announcement be made a part of the minutes of this meeting. I want to ask all to rise for the salute to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice. Barbara, would you call the roll, please? Mr. Barr? Here. Mr. Coggins? Here. Mr. Corson? Here. Mr. Young? Here. And Mayor Columbia? Here. All members are present. All right. Would someone like to make a motion uh, to approve the minutes from January 13th and January 27th, the regular and closed session minutes? Motion to approve. Second. Is there any corrections, elections, omissions that anyone's aware of? Hearing none, would you call the roll, please? Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Cobb? Yes. Mr. Christen? Yes. Mr. Young? Abstain. And Mayor Plumba? Yes. Motion is carried. Four in favor, one abstention. All right. Um, I guess we can run through the governing body reports before the presentation. So, uh, Scott, do you have something for us? Um, yes, uh, Mayor, and uh, good evening, and committee members. Um, just have one public works uh, project that uh, we mentioned during our finance uh, committee meeting that we completed, and that's the Caldwell Park uh, tennis courts. Uh, brand new fencing went up there uh, this past week. Uh, I think they did an excellent job uh, uh, installing that, uh, and it was long overdue. And I think a lot of uh, uh, a lot of residents uh, were happy to see that uh, that's, that's in place now. Um, and this afternoon we received from some guidance from, uh, interim guidance from, uh, for our emergency medical services uh, and public safety answering points, 911 centers, with respect to the uh, coronavirus. Um, and uh, it's basically uh, uh, just outlines uh, um, for our EMS personnel uh, specifics on if they should come across uh, suspect uh, a patient or uh, have to treat somebody, how to protect themselves, uh, and overall guidelines regarding that. So uh, that was disseminated uh, by uh, Chief Sampson uh, to all her personnel. Um, and uh, again, we take all the safety measures that we can from a, uh, it actually came to us through uh, uh, our county emergency management. Um, we're making sure that anything like that that comes along, we provide to our services here. And that's all I have to say. Okay. Barbara. Nothing this evening, sir. Thank you. Daniel. Nothing at this time. Paul. Thank you. Uh, first, I just wanted to announce that uh, we received notification uh, that we received our uh, $25,000 grant for FEMA FMA grant, um, and that's to cover uh, the implementation of a watershed management plan and a floodplain management plan uh, in accordance with the, the FEMA regulations. So that it's a that the, both of those are a prerequisite for the CRS program to try to move up to a class four community, and that's kind of one of the. The things that if we complete both of those with those additional points and some of the additional things that we're doing as part of the coastal coalition and some of the, the public information and flood insurance promotion that we're doing there we should have enough points to uh, in 2021 to apply to raise our class rating from a five to a four which would uh, potentially be eligible for a 30 percent discount in our residents flood insurance premiums so uh, you know uh, after we get through the budget process, we'll be able to start implementing that project because there is a uh, grant, I mean a uh, matching grant portion of that uh, project. But uh, um, I've already received one proposal from one of the consultants that was working on that project, and uh, you know, hopefully by summertime we'll be able to start moving that project forward. Uh, the next item I wanted to update the committee on: uh, we received notice we had applied to the Pinelands Commission to uh, resurface. Uh, Iroquois Trail out in Steelman Town. It's one of our uh, few last remaining gravel roads in the township. 
and so we, we've, we've gotten the okay that, that it's moving forward to, to uh, the Pine Lands Commission in March to receive their approval. Uh, and now that we've also uh, awarded our bulkhead project, um, I'd like to request authorization to bid the uh, paving project for both the bonds from the 2018 and 2019 bonds. I did prepare um, a preliminary list of uh, streets um, uh, for you this evening to kind of look at the, uh, there's about 6.68 miles of streets that we're looking at resurfacing um, with those two bond projects. And uh, if, if you're okay, I'd like to start preparing the, the plans and put the project out to bid uh, sometime in late spring for uh, summer, early fall construction. And I see you do have Iroquois on here. I do have Iroquois on here, yes. One question. Uh, I see we have Harbor Road on here. Yes. Is there any way we can get an additional, uh, some additional assistance from the DOT for Harbor Road, considering all of the uh, nonsense that they've kind of put us through up there along Harbor Road? They, um, they feel that they still owe us uh, for the, I'll say, the reimbursement for the taking of the easement to build the multi-use path down. But uh, when, they, when they installed the dry hydrant system underneath of the parkway bridge and paved essentially from our parking lot to the, I'll say, the far side of Cove Road uh, and replaced the guide rail and put in the bulkhead along there, they felt that that completed their requirements. And I know um, myself and you know, Ed Bard have had several meetings with the parkway and I don't you know, <coughs> anticipate them wanting to put out any additional funds in that area. <coughs> We're in the same dilemma as Summers Point, John. Yeah. <clears throat> I guess we could tell them we're putting a fence up around the pedestrian walkway of the bridge and we're not letting anybody in around. There's a fence there now. <laughs> we can't use it. we got to figure out how to be able to use it, I think. Yeah, that's a freaking good. But that section of Harbor Road would be the pave from Cove Road towards down the, to the, the, the cul-de-sac on the yeah. east side of the parkway. Uh, no other questions? That's all I have for this evening. Okay. I mean, I, I do need a, if, if you want to move forward at some point, I would need a uh, resolution or, or at least a motion to uh, start that process. Don't we usually put a formal resolution at the next meeting? Yes. Any, any objections to that? No. No. Thank you. Horrible. Meet him in Coggins. Uh, nothing this evening. I'm all talked out from the budget workshop. <laughs> <laughs> Committee Ben Young. Uh, just a few things. Uh, Easter egg hunt again this year will be on uh, Saturday, April the 4th, with a rain date on the 5th. Fourth uh, of July will be on the fourth, which will be a Saturday this year. Uh, I also had uh, the mayor of Dennis Township contact me, and uh, a young man that grew up here um, was out in the game reserve. I, I probably hunting out there, but found a big pile of trash out there and took it upon himself to clean it up, even though he doesn't live in Upper anymore. And uh, I just wanted to, you know, commend uh, Al Budo and I know, um, for going out there and, and, and cleaning that up and, and disposing of the trash himself. Um, it's not that often that we get people that will do that uh, just for a reason of being, you know, uh, conscious of it and for wanting to be a good neighbor. So again, Alberto, uh, maybe we'll, if I see you out there somewhere, we'll talk about it a bit. And that's all I have. Okay. Uh, Deputy Mayor Barr. Nothing to report tonight, sir. All right, we're moving right along. Committee Ming Corson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I have a few things. Um, our Upper Township Free Rabies Clinic will be held Saturday, February 22nd. I believe that's the last one till the fall. So if you need to get your animal rabies shot, it'll be available from 1 to 3 at Shore Veterinarian Hospital. Also, we have... Uh, Volunteer Rescue Squad is selling roses starting tomorrow, I believe, right? Michelle? The 12th. The 12th, 13th, and 14th, yes. They'll be selling roses for their annual fundraiser for Valentine's Day. So, 
And the other thing is Saturday, February 15th, is our fire budget election. So please, everyone, remember to come out and vote. That's all I have, Mr. Mayor. Okay. And I have nothing to add this evening. So um, let's move on to the presentation. I believe we have a presentation um, from the Historical Society uh, with respect to the book that is going or is published and about to be out on the market for Upper Township and its 10 villages. Good evening, gentlemen. Um, and staff, great to be here. Thank you for the honor of being placed on the agenda. Um, you know why I'm here and I have the book to present to the mayor, but I wanted to give you guys a, just some background as to how this book evolved. Um, the book idea started with a conversation with a beloved longtime township president, Louise Letzinger, who remarked that our old history book, which all of you have seen and perhaps have a copy of at home, was full of inaccuracies. That was putting it mildly. <laughs> so um, I contacted Ray Redman at the Dennisville Museum and talked to him about his publication, which he went with uh, Arcadia Publishing as well. And uh, we had a really great conversation, and he said, go for it. He says, you're gonna work hard. He said, but it's gonna be worth it. And uh, we did work hard. And when I say we, even though I wrote the book, the book would never have been possible without a whole slew of people, um, several, several of whom are here tonight, my wife <laughs> and Barb Haran. Barb Haran, Mike Hudart, uh, Sonia Forey, the, uh, the pre uh, previous uh, historian, uh, Lynn Dress, all of these people came to my home and helped me go through the photographs. The other thing I want you to know is the, the great outpouring of just great civic pride that people had when they called me to come to their home. I had a portable scanner. I went to everyone's home and scanned their pictures, wrote their stories, which were the captions for these pictures. And everyone was just so welcoming and wonderful. Curtis included, <laughs> and there's quite a few pictures of Curtis's family and whatnot in the book. But I'd be remiss without mentioning the Garrities. Uh, perhaps you guys heard this through the grapevine, but Tom and Grace Garrity donated in their great charity, as they always do with this township, $2,500 for the purchase of the books. Um, I am not taking any profit from the books. All of the money is going towards the Historical Society Museum Fund. Hint, hint. Um, and um, so basically that's it. And so I just wanted to let you know that the book and let everyone here know tonight that the book is available in about 16 different retail spots throughout the township. That was another wonderful thing. When I went and pitched this to the businesses, everyone was just fantastic. Uh, sure, we'll sell the books, you know, from Village Pharmacy to Marmora Hardware, uh, Upper Sandwiches, just to name a few. Fantastic. So uh, the book will be for, for sale throughout the township um, and also from Historical Society members, me included. Um, so, Mr. Mayor, if you'd like to come down from behind your dais there so I can. Is it a signed copy? It is. <laughs> <laughs> They're all over there. I'm just kidding. Oh, no, sure. <laughs> We'll accept this uh, on behalf of the township, and we will make sure that there will be a reference guide uh, here at the township hall. We hope it's in it, and uh, <laughs> you know, I look forward to, to uh, going through this myself. So It is very interesting. I think that's one of the reasons why we've always said that we plan for the future, but we try and preserve the past, because uh, Upper Township has a rich history. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there you go. No, but we do have a rich, rich history. Uh, we're over 200 years old. You can see 1798 is when our seal uh, came into place. So, um, you know, and it is explained in the book why that number is there, why that date is there, because I don't think many people know that that's in the book. So, you know, and just to make this official, I'll give this to the clerk so that I don't spill something on it or whatever. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to the Historical Society for all that they do. 
and, and putting together um, our rich history uh, of the township. So. All right. So we will now move on to the resolutions. Uh, for those of you that may be here um, just for the presentation, um, you're certainly welcome to go, uh, but you're also welcome to join us for the rest of the meeting. So. Okay, Item number two, congratulating the Upper Township Indians Junior Varsity Football Team on becoming the 2019 Cape Atlantic Junior Football League Champions. Motion to approve. Second. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corsi? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. And Mayor Plumber? Yes. It's carried. Item number three, congratulating the Upper Township Indians varsity football team on becoming the 2019 Cape Atlantic Junior Football League champions. Motion to approve. Second. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corsi? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. It's carried. Four, honoring the Upper Township Indians Junior Varsity Cheerleading Squad. Motion to approve. Second. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. And Mayor Palumbo? Yes. Item number five, honoring the Upper Township Indians Varsity, varsity Cheerleading Squad. Motion to approve. Second. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. And Mayor Palumbo? Yes. The motion is carried. Item number six, congratulating the Upper Township Riptide Black Hockey Team on becoming the 2019 Cape May County Hockey League second through fourth grade champions. Motion to approve. Second. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. The motion is carried. Item number seven, declaring the Township of Upper a Second Amendment and Lawful Gun Owner Sanctuary. Move the resolution. Second. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Cobb? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. And Mayor Palumbo? Yes. Motion is carried. Item number eight, authorizing Catherine M. Wright and B&K Enterprises to hold the Spring and Tuckahoe Craftsman and Home Event at the Upper Township Community Center on April 4th and 5th of 2020. Motion to approve. Second. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? <clears throat> yes. Mr. Young? Yes. And Mayor Palumbo? Yes. Motion is carried. Item number nine, appointing Serenian, Serenian Edwards and Nolan LLC to act as special legal counsel in matters involving affordable housing obligations. Motion to appoint. Second. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. Motion is carried. Ten. Appointing Keith A. Bonchi, attorney at law and law offices of GMS Law, a special legal counsel to complete certain interim foreclosure matters. Motion to approve. Second. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Abstain. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. And Mayor Palumbo? Yes. Motion is carried with one abstention. Light item number 11, appointing William Hoffman as a temporary employee to the Upper Township Construction Code Office to serve as construction official and building subcode official on an as needed basis. Motion to approve. Sorry. Sorry. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. And Mayor Palumbo? Yes. Motion is carried. 12, approving the application of the Upper Township Rescue Squad for highway coin drops. Motion approved. Second. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. Motion's carried. 13, appointing Nick Mancini and Lynn and Kyle Lindholm as part-time employees to the Upper Township <coughs> Division of Emergency Medical Services. With the resolution. Second. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Mr. Palumbo? Yes. Motion's carried. 14, adopting the emergency relocation plan for the primary and general elections. Move the resolution. Second. Second. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. 
Mayor Palumbo. Yes. Fifteen, authorizing a refund for vital record fees to Sally J. Godfrey of the Godfrey Funeral Home regarding case number 2148012. Motion to authorize. Second. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. And Mayor Plumbo? Yes. She's carried. 16, authorizing a shared services agreement with the County of Cape May for funding of the project known as Beasley Point Park Pedestrian Bicycle Gateway. Motion to resolution. Second. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. She's carried. 17, authorizing a change order, change order number one and two F with a reduction of $62,310.05 with Landberg Construction LLC for the construction of Bayview Drive and Commonwealth Avenue. Motion to authorize. Second. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. And Mayor Plumbo? Yes. Motion is carried. 18, authorizing the final payment and release of retainage to Landberg Construction LLC for the reconstruction of Bayview Drive and Commonwealth Avenue. Motion to authorize. Second. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. Motion is carried. 19, cancel tax on exempt property for Block 566, Lot 54. Motion to approve. Second. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. Motion is carried. Item number 20, refunding tax on exempt property for Block 10, Lot 136. Motion approved. Second. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. Motion carried. 21, refunding tax on exempt property for Block 15. 569, Lot 1. Motion to approve. Second. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Quirson? <clears throat> yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. Motion is carried. 22, refunding tax on exempt property for Block 726, Lot 3. Motion to approve. Second. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Quirson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. Motion is carried. 23. Authorizing the purchase of a 2024 utility and scepter vehicle in the amount of 31624 from the 2019 Capital Improvement Bond Ordinance. Motion to authorize. Second. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. And Mayor Plumbo? Yes. Motion is carried. Item number 24 under ordinances. Public hearing, public hearing and final adoption of ordinance number one, 2020, <clears throat> and ordinance revising job classifications and titles and amending chapter five, entitled personnel of the code of Upper Township. All right, before I open it up to the public, um, is there any, anybody have any comments? This, this just uh, adds uh, the correct name for the school traffic guard and also adds a wellness coordinator position. Okay, so at this time I'll open it up to the public. If anyone would like to address the Township Committee on Ordinance 1 2020, heard Mr. Young uh, give an explanation as to what it is. Uh, now's the time to do so. Please come up to the podium, state your name, um, and your reason for addressing uh, the Township uh, on this ordinance. Okay, let the record reflect that there is no public comment. I'll close the public comment portion to entertain a motion for adoption. Move we adopt ordinance number one of 220 or 20. Second. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Mayor Plumbo? Yes. Motion is carried. All in favor? Item number 25, public hearing. Public hearing and final adoption <clears throat> of ordinance number 2, 2020, and ordinance amending ordinance number 21. 2019, known as the salary ordinance for the calendar year 2020. Okay, this just addresses some of the um, salaries for those positions that we just identified as companion ordinance. 
Okay, so at this time, um, I'll open it up to the public. If anyone from the public would like to address the Township Committee with respect to Ordinance 2 2020, now's the time to do so. Please come up to the podium, state your name and your reason for addressing um, the Township on this ordinance. Okay, again, let the, let, the, let the record reflect that there is no public comment. I'll close the public comment portion of the meeting and entertain a motion for adoption. Motion to approve Ordinance 2-2020. Second. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? <clears throat> yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Mayor Colombo? Yes. Motion is carried with all in favor. Item number 26, under new business. Aaron Whitcamp Caldwell Post 239 American Legion requests to hold a raffle number 528 at the Heritage Links Golf Course on May 30th, 2020. Motion to approve. Second. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. And Mayor Plumbo? Yes. Motion is carried. 27. Greater Tuckahoe Area Merchants Association request to hold a raffle, number 528, at the Tuckahoe Volunteer Fire Company on March 7, 2020. Motion to allow. Second. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. And Mayor Palumbo? Yes. Motion is carried. 28. Joseph Del Duca requests for hardship waiver to a street mortuarium for 14 East Whittier Avenue at Block 848, Lot 8. Motion to approve. Before you do that, just uh, we'll bring a resolution back that will have the standards that are required for restoration. Yes. It's similar to what we've and, done. And this is for past. natural gas? This is for natural gas, yes. This is, uh, I assume it's within three years of when it was paved, that's why. Correct. You include that in your motion? Yes. Engineering standards. I'll second that. Okay. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Mayor Plumbo? Yes. Motion is carried. Item number 29, July 4th parade in Strathmere along Commonwealth Avenue from Prescott Avenue, Avenue to Williams Avenue from 10 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. Motion to approve. Second. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Mayor Plumbo? Yes. Motion is carried. 30, Department of Homeland Security and FEMA Information Sharing Access Agreement. Um, just a little bit of background. This is essentially a confidentiality agreement. Uh, the data that they're going to share with us has some uh, confidential information in it. Uh, we require that data in order to do the reports and the studies for our community rating system. And in order to get the data, uh, the township has to agree. And this is to authorize the mayor to sign the confidentiality. Motion to approve. Second. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. And Mayor Plumbo? Yes. Okay. Item number 31, Eagle <coughs> Scout Project Request. So we have a request uh, from an Eagle Scout to do a project in the old landfill off of Butter Road. And the request is, is to um, create a dog or animal walking path uh, so that they can, uh, I guess for the most part, take the dogs over um, into more of a, a natural setting rather than walk along uh, Butter Road, which we pretty much see them do that a lot, which certainly puts not only uh, the animal at risk, but certainly the handler at risk. So this is, I think, a pretty uh, And it will also be really a good for project. the public, not just for beacon animals. <clears throat> yeah, and um, so Paul, have you looked at the area that we're talking about? I've been out there twice. Uh, the last time I was out there, I was actually out there with the, the Eagle Scout. Hobie was out there also. Um, and uh, I forget the title, but one of the officers at uh, Beacon Animal, uh, Ryan, yeah. the director at Beacon Animal, and you know, I think what he's looking to do, I think, can be accomplished as part of an Eagle Scout project. It's you know, kind of just working along the, I'll say, the base of the landfill. There's a, an old road that runs around it. Probably 75% of it is, is cleared. The public works goes in there, 
probably twice a year and, and mows it, so it's fairly maintained. But there's some areas that need attention, and you know, and that's you know probably where the Eagle Scout project. Just to point out to the committee, uh, we there is a lease to the uh, Beacon Animal Shelter uh, uh, from the township um, because they'll be we're using other township lands. I would suggest that it. Um, be limited because the parking and access and whatnot is not there at the present time. That would be limited just to the use of vegan animal for walking. And we ask, we, uh, we probably need, not probably, we do need to amend or lease um, because there should be some indemnifications and confirmation of release of liability and that type of thing. Do we want it just limited to Beacon? Well, the problem is you're going to have to deal with it as a site, a public site. And if you know that area, there's no parking at the present. That, I mean, that's and you might have good. lighting issues and all that. Right. Yeah. So, but I think I think we should act on the Eagle Scout project. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then, if we, you know, if the success from it arises and there's an opportunity to expand it potentially, you know, we can address that at a later time. But I think just based on, I mean, this particular Eagle Scout is a volunteer at, at, at Beacon Animal Shelter anyway, and so I think it's uh, it's pretty unique that the Eagle Scout can actually work on a project that he's been involved with for a number of years. Oh, all in all, it's a great project. I think yeah. it's going to be. So I'll make a motion that we approve it. Second. Okay. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Cobb? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. And Mayor <clears throat> Yes. It's Gary. I needed to report. Oh, Andrew's sitting there, so. We, we look forward to watching your project uh, become a, a, you know, a, a unique situation. Uh, and you know what? Maybe we can uh, entice other animal shelters to do the same in some other areas. So good luck with the project. When you're done, you should give us a presentation. The right. mayor should have made you give a presentation. <laughs> How about I come out and help you walk some dogs? I'll do that. <laughs> Uh, Item number 32, under unfinished business, request for the installation of centerline pavement, no passing markings along New Jersey State Highway, Route 49, within mile post 49.84 to 53.80. Mayor, if you recall, um, I think it was maybe a month ago, the committee adopted a one in a series of resolutions that we've done dating back to 2015 regarding this issue and uh, asking the DOT to, hey, can you go and strike what you authorized back in 2015? Well, I had the, uh, the supervisor of the traffic investigations section of the Bureau of Traffic Engineering at the DOT called me um, because they went out and looked at it and they said, oh, it's strike the way their plan set. Um, I said, well, there's some confusion because back in 2015, when we requested no passing through this entire zone, you wrote back to us and said, hey, here's the approval for the change of the traffic regulations. Well, they didn't explain it very well to us and we didn't read the fine print. So there was a little bit of confusion on both of our parts. After further discussions, uh, with him, you know, they said, well, when I look at my map, it's mapped properly based on what was approved. Well, when you look at that, those regulations, it referenced the map. I said, well, you didn't send us the map. You just sent us back in regards to our resolution. We got the no passing zone. And when you look at the map, it's still, they, they had no passing except for essentially between Clover and Second Drive which that's one of the most vital sections that we wanted no passing in is that residential section, you know, right there through Marshallville. Um, there's a further section of no passing, I'll say on the other side of um, Woodbine Road as you go around the corner, you know, in front of where Deluzio's Market was, that, that long straightaway, um, you know, that's also set up for no passing. But the majority of that was not in um, the no passing zone. I think we had put it in that request, but that's not where we were specifically really wanting the no passing. It was really up in the Marshallville section. Um, so long story short, I think we need to, you know, uh, make a new request uh, for a no passing zone. I'll, I'll work with the clerk's office to, I mean, I mean, we have two sections, so 
I know we definitely wanted to do between Clover and Second. I think that was the most critical because of the residents being so close to the road. I'll ask for input whether or not you want to include that other no passing zone. I'll say <coughs> out in front of, uh, you know, I'm just going to call it out front of where the old Delucia's farm market was that straightaway stretch, um, you know, as it heads up towards Weatherby Road. Um, if you want to include that, um, I'm also going to suggest that we obviously would copy our local state legislators, but it may need a phone call to the legislators to really just, you know, you know, because the DOT is going to come back and on their initial engineering review, they're going to say it's not warranted. However, you know, there's other considerations. And when you look at throughout just Cape May County and Cumberland County in Atlanta County, you know, the DOT has made, you know, changes of <coughs> passing, I mean, to no passing, where it maybe doesn't meet the technical standards of the DOT regulations, but because of, you know, especially in a short traffic area where, you know, we have issues of a lot of speeding traffic, we don't have local police enforcement, and, and wanting some of these other issues with uh, safety um, that, you know. Just the sheer amount of accidents they've had there over the years should yeah. make it warranted. But unfortunately, you know, under the strict guidance of the standards, it doesn't. I'm just thinking that it's going to take some, you know, as we send up a resolution, I think that we're going to, you know, you know somebody from town committee may want to make us some personal calls to some of our state legislators, maybe even to uh, the DOT government affairs liaison to really talk to them, you know, saying we've been asking since 2015 and, you know, you know, we're, we're still asking. All right, so, so, so if we, if we do a resolution that details the areas of concern, um, we will certainly include the now current legislators because they've obviously changed in January, the senator in December. So um, we can work with the legislators, but there's a different group there, and maybe they'll be a little bit more effective for us. So, yes. And so really, the question is: Do you want to include both <coughs> passing zones, or just the one in Marshallville, the center of Marshallville area? We'll do both. I, I would say both yeah. as long as we don't detract from the one area that we really think there's a there's a real issue. Okay. We'll do the resolution for the next meeting. Yes. Thank all right. you. Fred, I hereby move that all claims submitted for payment at this meeting be approved and then incorporated into the full minutes of this meeting. Second. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Crockett? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. <coughs> yes. There are a number of reports from our municipal departments, Animal Control, Construction Code, Department of Public Works, Division of EMS, Municipal Court, MUA Report, and Tax Collector Report. All those reports will be available upon request tomorrow morning at the clerk's office, but I'll make a motion to accept these reports. Second. Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. Mayor Palumbo? Yes. Mrs. Carey? So at this time, um, it's an opportunity for the public to address the Township Committee. Now is the time to do so. Please come up to the podium, state your name, your address, and your reason for addressing the Township Committee. Good evening, I'm Blanche Adams, uh, resident of Woodbine Road in Steelman Town. And I just wanted some clarity on the um, resolution that was passed tonight. Um, just two issues, the declaring the Township of Upper a Second Amendment and lawful gun owner sanctuary. So the clarification that I needed was, um, it looks like the resolution is pretty much the exact language that has been used in resolutions all across the country, probably 200 plus, with the exceptions of you pulled out um, some reference to a local New Jersey statute. So I wanted to just know, was your intention pretty much that it's symbolic um, support of Second Amendment rights, or did you have intention to actually ask the state police to not enforce state or federal laws? Well, no, there's, no, there's no intent whatsoever to ask uh, the state police or any other law enforcement agency to fail to enforce 
a law that's on the book or an existing law. What, okay. we're, what we're looking for is we're looking to show our support for the Second Amendment. We see the Constitution and the Bill of Rights as a sacred document that is Absolutely. constantly being trampled on in today's government and especially in the state of New Jersey. So as a body, what we are doing is we are affirming uh, our belief in the Second Amendment as being part of the, as being part of our Bill of Rights and we most certainly agree with the portion of it that says shall not be infringed and we feel as though it has been infringed on uh, way too much in the state of New Jersey. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I can respect that and I certainly know that this is the time where we should support and uphold our entire Constitution. So I do respect um, singling out the Second Amendment and um, as a family of gun owners, I can definitely respect that sportsman. Um, my second point is the use of the word sanctuary. So when I read the word sanctuary, it seems like that's like a safe haven. That's typically what sanctuary means. So I was just wondering if there can't be another word so that people don't get the impression that Upper Township will protect them if they um, don't obey a state or federal law. It just seems the word sanctuary um, is being misused there. Unless that's, when you just said that's not your intention. Misused at the state level then too. Pardon me? The state's misusing it when we became a sanctuary state. <laughs> they, is the, the state is a sanctuary state? No, for mean? illegals. Oh, well, I'm not addressing that. I'm just addressing the Second <laughs> Amendment right now. I, I'm, not, I think I'm not even prepared to address we're, we're immigrants. We're not providing refuge or, or assistance to anyone who chooses to break or challenges any lawful ordinances or laws that are on the book. Okay. Well, that's... We're, we're just um, not creating um, a, a, a boundary or, or prohibiting people from not owning guns, especially those that are involved with hunting and there are reasons for, for I personally don't own a, own a firearm, but that doesn't mean I don't support uh, the, the uh, right to, to bear arms. So, um, you know, I mean, I think, I think what it means by sanctuary is those people that are residents within the township that are wall-abiding, you know, citizens or residents of the township have the right to own a gun if, if they, they meet the qualifications uh, yeah. that are required by the state. Which they have that right now. That's why I was just a little, wanted the clarity. We have the right to own a gun right now under the Second Amendment. So I get what you're saying. You're supporting no further infringements on that right, but not um, harboring any criminals, nor are, are you suggesting that anyone break a state or federal law, which exactly. definitely. I would expect nothing less from us here in Upper Township. Um, okay, that was it for that. Thank you. Would anyone else like to address the Township Committee? I'm not from this township. I'm from Ermine, New Jersey. I'm a, one of the people that's got involved in this group, the Amen. Second Amendment, and I just want to Amen. applaud you. We need your name. And Tom Nelson from Ermine, New Jersey. Thank you. And I just want to applaud you for standing up for the Second Amendment and the Constitution and doing the right thing. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. My name is John Trainer. I'm from uh, Dennis Township. I'm one of the three gentlemen of you know the other two gentlemen here that you know started this Cape May County. I'm also a retired Army Sergeant of 34 years. Uh, I just retired last last March. And uh, I got involved in this movement, uh, not just because of the Second Amendment, but, you know, everything in the Bill of Rights. And it seems in today's atmosphere, especially in this state, a lot of that's being violated. And uh, for somebody who served this country for 34 years, I took an oath to uh, defend that Constitution and that Bill of Rights, you know, from enemies foreign and domestic. So uh, that's why this is so important to me. And, and I'd like to please thank you for, uh, as politicians, you know, for um, defending our, our, our constitutional rights. I mean, that document is probably the, the most do important document in the whole entire world. It gives us our freedom. And uh, those rights aren't, aren't to be infringed by state law. 
the states are not allowed to pass any laws that violate any rights in the, in the Bill of Rights, not just the Second Amendment. And it seems like they, they've been getting away with that a lot lately. Uh, and not just in New Jersey, but other states, in, at least until it's challenged in court. So um, I, I, this is probably one of the hardest states to have to come home to after serving in combat. I mean, I, I, come, I come home from combat and I'm told I'm not allowed to defend myself in this state. And, I, and God forbid I ever have to do that again. I, I don't ever wanna have to do that again. I've, 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 I've been there, I've, I've taken life in war, and I never wanna do that again. Uh, but I would like to know that if the need arises, I can protect my family and my children without facing you know, jail time, you know, if, I, if I ever had to do that. And uh, it's, it's very hard in this state. It's probably the only state in the country that you can't even legally carry a firearm. Um, not that I would want to walk into a restaurant or any public place or something like that, but I'm just saying um, thank you very much for at least extending uh, the support for the Constitution. That's it. Thank you. Thank you for your service. Do you want to... Hello, my name is Janet Younghans. I am a resident of Upper Township. I live at on Tuckahoe Road in Petersburg. We are facing a gun violence crisis in this country that takes 100 lives every single day and injures 200 more when democratically elected lawmakers take action to improve public safety, the people sworn to protect our communities have an obligation to carry out the law, not defy it. These resolutions are legally meaningless, but they undermine the rule of law, foster distrust in law enforcement, and may deter people from reporting individuals who may hurt themselves or others. It is my understanding that many of these gun sanctuary resolutions are in response to sensible gun legislation, such as background checks and red flag laws. A red flag law, if you don't know, is designed to temporarily remove guns from persons whom a judge has deemed a threat to themselves or others. We cannot afford to wait until someone is shot to remove guns from a dangerous individual. If someone tells you that gun safety laws violate the Constitution, as you've been told this evening, they are wrong. These rules have been ruled constitutional in court and do not violate anyone's Second Amendment rights. In threatening to defy state law, you will violate your oaths of office. Although there are many in this room who may agree with the concept of a Second Amendment sanctuary city, I assure you that you are on the wrong side of this issue. Gun violence in this country will not simply go away. With over 100 Americans shot and killed each day, more and more voters will vote for elected officials who will find ways to keep them safe. It is a fact that 95% of voters support background checks on all gun sales, and 85% of voters nationwide support red flag laws. If this body creates a resolution similar to that declared by the freeholders of Cape May County, they will overstep their role in the constitutional system, and in the process, will undermine the rule of law. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, my name is Dave Daniels. I'm also a resident of Petersburg. I have to respectfully disagree with the, uh, the lady that just spoke. I don't believe that these resolutions undermine the belief or the trust in law enforcement. I'm a retired law enforcement officer and I currently serve as an instructor with the Atlanta County Police Training Center. I'm the firearms instructor and range master there. I've been involved in law enforcement for 32 years. 
I can tell you that most in law enforcement respect the decisions that you made here tonight. Too many, too many politicians in our time don't take their oath of office seriously. As a police officer, from the military to politicians, we all take oaths that are very similar. And in each one of those oaths, it says to support and defend the Constitution of the United States and of the state of New Jersey against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That Constitution says that the right to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. That is an individual right. The argument that it's for a well-regulated militia has been torn apart by the courts time and time again. If you read the wording, there's one comma in there. The comma makes it an individual right. And politicians tend to forget the oath they take. I would like to thank each of you for adhering to that oath and keeping that in mind and fulfilling your promise to the community. In no way does it undermine law enforcement. It is a law-abiding gun owner sanctuary resolution. People read sanctuary and they think we're giving sanctuary to illegals. That's only the governor. We're giving support to people who respect the law, obey the law, comply with all of the rigorous commands that the government requires us just to possess a firearm. There's been way too much infringement, and if it doesn't stop, I fear that this country is going to follow in the footpaths of many other countries where gun confiscation is the first step to total dictatorship and tyranny. And if you don't believe that history repeats itself, you're sadly mistaken and you're living with your head in the sand. This happens time and time again, and most recently, all you have to do is look at the country of Venezuela. Once their guns were gone, it was only a few short years before that country deteriorated into poverty and a dictatorship and total control of the citizens. The Second Amendment was not created for hunting or for sportsmanship. It was created to keep our government free, to keep our people free, and to make sure that our elected officials don't abuse their authority. Thank you for your dedication and your support and for recognizing the oath of office that each of you took. I've taken it several times. And when I go to bed at night, I'm retired, I still live by that oath. Support and defend the Constitution of the United States. Thank you. everyone to be kind of courteous. I know there's two sides and we're going to be going back and forth I suppose. Um, for those of you that don't know I've never hit this gavel in 20 years as mayor because I allow a lot of latitude for people to speak but I would also expect all of you in the audience to be courteous to one another. It's not who's right and who's wrong. Everybody's entitled to their opinion uh, and that's why some of the things that we've passed over the years in resolutions is the reason we do those things because we do think that everybody has a right to uh, one of the constitutional you know is freedom of speech so you know let's just make sure that we're courteous to, to I hear some grumblings and clapping on both sides you know what it's not it's not a who's right and who's wrong let's just it's nice to hear everybody's opinion so and that's what this is for yes yeah, good evening Adam. Thank you for the opportunity to, uh, to say name, a couple words. Name. My name is Thomas Hudukovic. I live uh, in Petersburg here in Upper Township. I'm a relatively new newcomer to the area, about 15 years, I guess. Um, I just wanted to say that uh, I was glad you provided the clarification that uh, uh, you are not actually seeking to, dis to um, encourage people to flout the existing law. Um, uh, that's important. That was important to me because I, uh, I once worked with a young man uh, back when I lived in Delaware. Sometime after I had, was no longer working with him, I discovered he had shot his girlfriend, killed her, and he spent many years in jail. I, I obviously was a person who should not have owned a weapon. I also, from the professional work that I do, 
I know that people who were fine one day can not be so fine another day later on. And circumstances may arise when it is not a good idea for those people who may formerly have been very responsible gun owners, who I have no problem with, to become somebody who is a danger to themselves or to another person. That is why I support red flag laws. And uh, I am glad that you clarified that you're not trying to discourage the police uh, from enforcing uh, the red flag law here. That's all I really had to say. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Would anyone else like to address the Township Committee? Hello, my name is Bill Zimmerman. Uh, I'm the owner of Misty Meadow Sheep Dairy in Petersburg, New Jersey. That's 100 Dennisville, Petersburg Road. I'm here tonight to ask the, the Township Committee to consider having the Upper Township Farmers Market at Misty Meadow Sheep Dairy. Um, the reason I would like this to be considered is um, I started out when I was young uh, working on my grandfather's dairy farm. And in today's society, um, in the state alone, we've lost 2,500 dairy farms last year. We lost, we are, we have in um, the state of New Jersey, we have 42 active dairy farms, and that's out of 500 when it started. So the reason I'm explaining this to you is I started out this mission to try to help the dairy farms in the country. And right here in Upper Township, that's what I'm doing. Um, I work very well with the state. Um, my farm is a pilot program for the dairy farm industry in the country where we are going to make dairy farms sustainable with young and new farmers. And the reason we can do that is people have to change. We need to understand that the people out there today want to know where their food comes from. And what we need to do is we need to educate them. We do a lot of social media work. We go to farmer's markets. We educate the public. The public needs to know that you're taking care of the animals, you're feeding them right, and you're doing the right thing. So back to the farmer's market thing. Um, in order to do that, one of my plans through this whole course of action to help young farmers is you need to have a farmer's market or you need to attend farmer's markets because you need to explain to the people, the people want to talk to the farmer. They want to talk to the guy who grows the string bean. They want to talk to the guy who grows the tomato. They want to know that they're all grown locally. And we don't have anything uh, like that. We'll be the first one, if you agree to have it at my farm, to do that. We're a working farm. We milk sheep uh, every day at five. We milk them in the morning. We make products, we make cheese. Our ice cream is going to be going to distribution this year. Um, it, it's a big thing. I have people from all over the country calling me, asking me for milk. And I need the public to come there to see this. This is why I'm doing this. It's not a, a big money raiser. I've invested all of my retirement money into this to try to help the dairy industry. So I'm here tonight to ask the township to consider redoing the Upper Township's Farmers Market, which hasn't taken place in the last two years. Um, one of the big reasons why farmers markets don't work is you need to have the right vendors at the farmers market. So I went out and found a really good farmers market um, programmer or agent, whatever you want to call them, who does two or three different farmers markets. She actually works for me now. She takes care of a lot of my social media stuff to get the farm out there. Um, so with her brings the good vendors to the market. Then it brings the, the real farmers, the guys who get their hands dirty, and not hucksters, um, to the markets. And that's what I hope to bring to Upper Township by having the farm, uh, farmer's market at my farm, where people can come there, watch the sheep being milked, and actually have a real farm experience. So 
Um, I guess what I'm asking the township for is to support this. Um, I'm not asking for any financial backing in this at any, any point. I'm asking for the green team who has already been involved with this to help with uh, the publicity of this. I'm, actually, I'm asking the township to maybe use their social media footprint to help advertise. But um, again, I think it's gonna, it would be a really good thing for the township. And I can bring all that to the farmer's market. So I guess uh, if so, you guys have any so questions for me. Just so I'm clear, are you asking for the township to be a partner in support of this project or, or, or because you're using the upper township name as a farmer's market? I mean, I guess what I'm trying to, to, to determine is, is, is what liability it, is the township susceptible to. There, and there also could be site plan, traffic, parking, those type of issues. Uh, Grand Farms have special... I, I already have a site-specific farm app for my farm. Uh, I, I'd have to review that. Uh, there is a, a role of the municipality uh, when farms are open to the public and you do events like this, site plans uh, may be reviewed. I don't know anything about the area or what his site plan looks like, so I would be hesitant to recommend that the town should take any action until you review those issues because not knowing the neighborhood, not knowing what would happen, you could have a... a uh, a, a large event and not have addressed site plan issues so but I guess there's two different uh, so the That's site plan the, the, the one issue would be the site plan approval to allow an expansion yes. of the existing he, as, as he, property as use said, he is a farm and he has protected I'm, I'm actually more than a farm um, last two years ago um, I was asked by the state to get a site specific farm app which what that does is I have to send out letters to the community. Uh, one went to the township um, to grant me being an agro-tourism and events facility that is a sheep milking dairy. Um, that's what I have with the county. And, and I'm not entirely familiar with that, so I'd have to research it to find out what rights a municipality may have in the event the event overwhelms the area. If it overwhelms the area, that could be a problem to a municipality. Maybe your plan will not do that. I don't know. It is. It's an issue that you would want to look we, at. We have an um, Easter egg hunt um, where we put out a couple thousand eggs. That is a farm event that is covered under my site-specific farm app. Um, we have a lamb shearing, which will be done this um, Sunday at the farm, which is a site-specific farm app. Um, I don't feel that I need to come to the committee every time I do one of these events at my farm. Uh, that's why the county gave me permission to do this. Well, I, but I, I think... Again, I, I'm not here to argue with anybody. No, I'm no, just trying I, to help I, the situation. Listen, I'd like to see <laughs> the farm market resurrected somehow, but um, I think what we need to do is just make, to make sure that and, and I'm not familiar with the inside of your, your property or site plan and Paul will probably have to rely on you as well. Um, I think what we're trying to do is is I don't think we're we're saying no. I think we're just we need to review so that I mean the difference between you having an event at your farm and having a farm market is is the farm market from what the ones that I've been to draw people from all over. So it really could be a, a, a large amount of traffic even in the the, the small farm market that, that we had you know in the past there were still a significant amount of cars to go there a significant amount of people to go there um, in fact you know I mean there are people that literally say I know that on uh, Wednesday it's in Ocean City or Tuesday it's in Sea Isle so you know I, I mean it becomes a part of a trek that that people make for fresh produce and stuff so well, what would make this one unique though is I think this is probably the only one in the state of New Jersey that's actually well, held I, on and form. again I don't I don't <laughs> want in any way to give the impression that I'm opposed to the question I just think we need to do a little research and work with you and it's something okay, that and, we can read we can actually agendize it you know at a future the, meeting once we get all the stuff we need the Why? most in, the most important part of this whole thing is um, is the um, events coordinator or the, the farmer's market agent that I have. And I'm going, I don't have much time, is what I'm getting at. There's, um, we, I've been talking to Paul about this uh, for a while, and, um, and unless we start this right within the next week or so, 
it, it's not going to happen because it, there's a lot involved in the media part of this to make it happen. If you don't, you know as well as I do, you've tried this uh, before and it doesn't work because you didn't have the vendors. Um, and you tried to do it two, two years ago and you didn't have the vendors. Well, I can bring the vendors to this market with this person that I have. But if they get there and the people don't show up because we didn't advertise pro properly, it won't, they won't stay, is, is what I'm getting at. So um, again, it, it doesn't matter either way to me. This isn't um, financially great for me. <laughs> It'll probably cost me money to do it. But um, I just, uh, again, it goes back to that story about trying to help farms in this state. And if we do it as a pilot program here, the, another county will do it, another county will do it, another county will do it. And pretty soon, young farmers will be able to make some money and start farms. That's the reason why I'm doing what I'm doing. So again, uh, Sunday I'll probably have 500 people at my farm at the Sheeran just because of what we do with uh, social media. So, you know, that. Based, based on my conversation with the Mr. Moon last week, he, he was anticipating filing with a planning board with a site plan. Yes, um, again, um, I, wanna be, I wanna be partners with the township. I, I want everybody to be happy. So I will, even though I don't really think that I have to do it, but I will do it, um, you know, to, Again, I don't need for Sunday's event to have a, a site approval for it because be of notice. what I did. That will be with notice, is that what you're saying? A, a site plan with notice? Well, that would be a site plan waiver. That's when we did the farmer's market last time that it, it usually qualified for a site plan waiver, and which doesn't require noticing. It's a it's plan board. Right? You, you, Mayor and Hobie are uh, members of the plan board. You would decide whether or not it's made or not to be as a waiver or, or otherwise. I think I'm doing it. Is that the bill the agenda for, that, for a week it, from Thursday? I, I, think I'm doing, that issue's determined. I think under the New Jersey Right to Farm Act, the only reason he's doing that is a courtesy to the township. That's I don't it. believe there he are, has to do it. There are some rights for municipal overview. It's not the traditional site plan. Yeah. If he wants to go that route and, and get the recommendations, and he, that he may get the support of the township. My point is, is if this planning board uh, uh, has no problem with his plan, that question that I raised is, is answered. Well, it, again, if, if something doesn't happen within the next couple weeks or what, whatever, I'm, I, we'll just have to table it and try it next year. Because um, it's, uh, to me, again, it, it doesn't matter to me. I'm just trying to help. So. Well, yeah. What do we need to make it happen? Just put it on the planning board agenda? Well, look, we don't. The well, planning board would address it. He's already said he voluntarily go into the planning Yeah, I'm, board. I'm you know, the, the $800, the $200, you know. <laughs> and that issue is resolved. The, the next issue is do you want to participate publicly or socially or whatever? It's up I think you. it's a great idea. Well, I think we all agree with that. Again, you know, uh, something new for us too, Bill, you know, so we're not sure. I said the realities of it. Uh, I don't know how much Dan's looked into it yet. He hasn't seen a plan. Yes, yeah, I, I agree 100%. These are the these are the things that I am trying to do for other farmers in the state and the country to try to get a a footprint so people can get through all these obstacles. And believe me, I've hopped over every obstacle to have that dairy farm here. And. Um, and it cost me a fortune. And these are the things that I'm trying to get out of the way for other farmers. And I believe this will be really big and the township will be recognized for, yeah. I think for this in the future. What I'm trying to say is, you know, I don't think we can arbitrarily disapprove it. We'd have to have legal guidance from Dan to whether it meets some balls or not. But the, the, it's, it's the, the concerns right that here. as a municipality, the concerns you would have would be the cycling concerns. Farms are a special exception. He has rules to do other uh, items. There is also a process to go through his uh, uh, County Agricultural Review Board if you feel it, his facilities are not sufficient to handle those. those. That's all being bypassed by a voluntary ap application to the Planning Board. Yes. If the Planning Board resolves those issues, you, we don't have to get into the weeds. Um, it's resolved. The second issue is whether or not and how much and how you would support it. Is it something to go on the next agenda time-wise? 
Is there a I notice mean, required? Can they notice and all that? There is no notice for, for a site plan waiver. There is no notice requirement. Um, but the planning board has to determine if it's Meyer enough to. Well, he's that asking. It, I mean, he's not asking for financial support. He's asking for to support it with our social media and our website and the green team, who has already has experience in, in the, the farmers market. market. I would suggest that you reserve that decision until after you get the opinion of the so, planning board. So, so let, let's think of this: the the planning board meets a week from Thursday. Yes. Right. Our next meeting is two weeks from tonight. Correct. So. The outcome of the planning board could certainly be something that the township, because we finished the agenda on Friday, correct? No. Then we could put that, you can tentatively put it up, why don't you, let's put it on the agenda now. Unfinished business. For, un, as a, yeah, as unfinished business. And, um, you know, we, we I, I think, I think it's just a matter of understanding the area and, and you know. yeah again but i don't, I don't we're think not a farming community so no, right. nobody knows I mean, the, the you guys media. don't know what what these things mean if we were in iowa in cornfields you would know that the county has jurisdiction on this you can either go one I, or two I, things i understand that I, I acknowledge that that's why i said you voluntarily went to the right. planning board yeah so the but the municipality does have a role of the agricultural <laughs> review board if they are concerned yeah they had the and opportunity I, I to speak that. up when i went for my site-specific farm app to whether or not but i was going to do anything considering the or different. you know what I, I i actually think we're on the same page so, i know that so rather rather than get into sure you know back and forth um I think once we get through this, there'll be some comfort level. We certainly can afford you the resources from our Facebook uh, page and then also our website. And, you know, they can probably even do some streamers or whatever on yeah, the Yeah, and, we're, and we're looking for thing, maybe but, take care of the trash and the recycling, something like that. That's, that's all I'm really asking for. And I think it's a worthwhile project for the township to support. We need trash games. So, um, you know, I, I think that if we, if you, are available in two weeks um, that'll be something that we'll address on the township so and I need to fill out that application okay I mean there's two people that are on the planning board myself and mr. young so sure I was you know set to do that so we'll go forward with that and we'll see what happens okay thank you thanks Hi, I'm Ralph Cooper, Gladwin Drive. I'm the chairperson of the Green Team. I just wanted to reinforce our endorsement of what Bill was suggesting, uh, and I'm glad to hear that uh, the committee's on the same page. Um, we had this farmer's market successful for two years, five years ago, and it was a great thing for the community and uh, for all the reasons that Bill talked about. Um, the one thing you can't do with the farmer's market is you cannot put it together and start it two weeks before the market starts. It has to be done now, and as Bill said, we're already behind the eight ball. So whatever you can do as a municipality to try to get these different items talked about and covered that you're involved with, it'd be great. What we're looking for really is a farmer's market pretty much designed as we had three years ago. We had a steering committee. We operated with vendors. It's a closed market, so we know how to control it. You literally have, for example, one person selling honey. You don't have like five vendors selling honey and changing prices and everything else. It's a very organized system, and Bill took a lot of time this past year to be in different markets in the area, so he's very familiar with it. I also have met as with Paul and some of the staff, uh, his market manager is very uh, dedicated and very knowledgeable. She's run markets over in other communities. I think it's a good opportunity for the town. Our green team is 100% behind it, and we'd like to do what we can to, to make it happen. I must tell you, when I go up to middle part and northern part of New Jersey, I'm starting to hear conversations about this uh, Misty Meadows farm. So it's a right in the middle of the township. It's a very important and growing asset for our community. And finally, I think that three years ago, the farmer's market was an instrumental in helping the township and the residents appreciate sustainable practices, green practices, and so forth. This can do that again this summer. So 
I'm willing to do whatever I can as the chairman to help that happen as a green team. Any questions? Nope. But just to emphasize that in fairness, this is the first it's been presented to us and, and we're working as quick as we can just on tonight's presentation. So okay. you know, it's not like we had been approached with this before. So if we can handle it and get it taken care of by the end of the month, we have done a yeoman's job to get to that point. Thank you. Good evening, gentlemen. My name is Keith Johnson. I live at 1490 Route 50 in Petersburg. Um, I am a retired police officer from Ocean City, 25 years. I recently relocated back from the state of Virginia, which brings up all this sanctuary state, sanctuary county uh, issue. Uh, I've heard both sides, and I think the fear mostly is the word sanctuary. Um, I have researched the Second Amendment group here in Cape May County and in the state of New Jersey. I've spoken to them on the phone with the state group. <clears throat> uh, while I was in the state of Virginia, the reason I was there is I was hired as a lead firearms instructor for one of the largest gun ranges on the eastern seaboard in Lynchburg, Virginia. So I taught concealed carry. I taught firearm safety. I taught advanced firearms. I taught church safety teams and threat assessment to protect themselves because it's a very rural area out in the western part of Virginia. So when you hear the word sanctuary, you also have this fear. What is going on in Virginia is not taking place in the state of New Jersey, people. What is going on in Virginia, it's mostly run, counties and municipalities are run by sheriffs. They are appointed positions. They're not municipalities like Upper Township run by the state police or Ocean City or Sea Isle or Avalon or Hoboken. What is happening in the state of Virginia is that a governor <clears throat> has made it his point that he says, and his own words were, that he was going to go door to door and put together a 40-man team from the state police to arrest individuals that will not abide by the laws that he once set forth. That's not what's taking place in the state of New Jersey. In the state of New Jersey, we're abiding by the laws. Unfortunately, some of the laws were put in place, like the new magazine ban, made over a million New Jerseyans felons immediately. When they also passed that law, another piece of, of a little interesting point, is they did not make any allocation for law enforcement, and therefore the law enforcement officers who were carrying the magazines of 15 rounds or more were felons themselves while they were working. And they had to change the law. They had to fix it. So when you hear the word sanctuary, don't jump to conclusions. The sheriffs down in Virginia have said this. They are the ones who said that they will not enforce the governor's laws because they do not believe that they follow the Constitution. And each one of those sheriffs took an oath on the Constitution to protect the Second Amendment and believe that the governor of the state of Virginia is violating all of the Constitution together. The state of New Jersey, and you guys can correct me if I'm wrong, when it comes to the sanctuary, they're saying that they are law-abiding, that they will follow the laws which are written in the state of New Jersey, which, my, let me tell you, they are the toughest in the country. New Jersey firearms laws are the toughest in the United States of America. In the state of Virginia, it's a presumption law. If it's not written in a law, it's presumed allowable. Allowable. In the state of New Jersey, it's not. It's not designed that way because we're not a commonwealth state. That's the difference between our laws in New Jersey and commonwealths such as Pennsylvania and Virginia. So you don't need to be afraid when you hear these terms. I've done a lot of research just in the last 20 years on how things are actually 40 years. When we went to high school and you were 18 years old, many of the residents of Upper Township were allowed to bring their shotgun into a rack in the back of their, their, their truck because they were hunters and they had a hunting permit. We didn't shoot each other. We didn't do that. We settled our differences. We didn't fire one shot. Society has changed drastically in the last 40 years. The fears that we put into people through media, 
And if you think it's not true, research it yourself. Don't take my word for it. You heard people stand up here and say, weapon, weapon, weapon. As a firearms instructor through the NRA, I'm a PTC, Police Training Commission firearms instructor, in numerous firearms and automatic weapons. You put the word weapon into something and it's gonna scare the daylights out of you. It's a gun. You don't fly on a weapon of mass destruction. You fly on an airplane. Yet it can be used as a weapon, can it not? I can use these glasses as a weapon, can right. I not? Keep your, can you keep up here? We're not going right. back and forth. I understand. I'm keep sorry, to Mayor. the township committee, okay? Please. So what we need to understand is, is I don't think you need to be afraid of the word sanctuary when it comes to the state of New Jersey. The state of New Jersey will always follow the laws. When we talk about comprehensive background checks and everything else, let me tell you, there is comprehensive background checks. They've never changed. There are more federal laws when it comes to firearms that are on the books that are not used today than ever before. They're not enforced federally. So the reason I spoke tonight, I wasn't going to, was to tell you I came from the state of the sanctuary that started this whole thing. And I came back to the state of New Jersey because my mother was ill and I needed to move back to help take care of her or otherwise believe me, I'd have stayed in Virginia. All right? So Jersey will always follow the law. They always have, they always, they always will. There's not gonna be people running around with guns and everything all over the place and doing things illegal because you use the word sanctuary. I applaud you gentlemen for standing up and doing what you did. You followed in the footsteps of our forefathers. They got together and they stepped up to the plate and they did what they did to protect people's rights of freedom. And if you're not careful, if you're not careful, you will lose more freedoms than you could possibly believe if you just allow things to happen without research. You educate yourself. I wholeheartedly ask you all, educate yourself. We might not agree, but in order to make a decision, you need to have education on it and understand it. Thank you. Linda Bateman, 14 East Tecumseh, Strathmere. I'm also president of the Strathmere Improvement Association. I have two quick questions. One uh, primary importance is the township building ordinance was postponed in November and then again in December from the planning board agenda. Um, I written to all of you and uh, to members of the planning board or members of other township people and I know that several residents have. Um, I understand there's a crowded planning board agenda. I'm asking whether or not this will be included in the next meeting's agenda as even as we speak uh, there are things coming before the zoning board that will have major impacts on building plans in Strathmere as well as I'm sure other township properties. So I'm asking that uh, we continue to get onto the agenda and stay on the agenda so that this can move forward. We've been at this, as you know, for many, many months. <clears throat> I haven't gotten a reply, and I don't know that any of the other people in town who contacted you were given a reply. Have you seen the schedule for? We were also... It should be on the schedule. I don't see a yeah, reason why it's... Well. Last I heard, you were on the schedule. Okay. We were on the schedule for this. We don't make up the, the planning board agenda, so... Well... <coughs> Yes, but I also, you know, my, one of the things that we try to do is to communicate with our townspeople, and you do and, remember. And, and as, as I stated, there was a rare occurrence where Absolutely. someone passed away on Christmas. <coughs> Absolutely. And left us short. We had someone resign, and so we wanted to make sure that we had a full planning board for next Thursday's meeting. And, and so, you know, I'm not making excuses. It may not work in your timeline, but, but we felt that we you know, had to replace the individuals that one, like I said, unfortunately passed away unexpectedly right. and but one, one resigned. I understand so. that. And, and we certainly, of course, miss Mr. Kelly and, and 
thought that we had a good working relationship with him. But one of the, one of the things as we go through this timeline was that there's a crowded agenda and that we may not be able to go forward in a timely manner. So I'm asking that you do. I don't keep know if the planning, I mean, I, I, I'll do respect. I don't think the planning board agenda is that crowded, no. to be honest. I, I, think I have no control of the planning board agenda. And then we have to get onto the township agenda. Mm -hmm. Anyway, we didn't have a, there was no response, I'm asking, and you've answered it. Uh, the second thing is, is, um, is, is, is the trash, the continuing trash story uh, in the off season. Um, do we pick up the, the cans at the beach end or not pick up the cans this last weekend with the wind? We have four cans on our street alone. There was trash everywhere. Um, I, don't, I don't know what the solution is or what the policy is, but I understood that they were going to be picked up. Um, we don't need four. We could certainly go down to one each if there's a demand for it. I don't know, but I didn't. It was my understanding that they were going to be picked up and they weren't. So I don't know. I don't know what the policy is or what you. They should be picked up on a regular basis based on the schedule. No, I don't. I'm sorry. I mean the actual cans themselves are blowing. Um, they're they're sitting at the beach end. Oh, so you're saying there's too many at your street end. Right, and in the off-season, we really don't need four. And I, I'm, in the past, they've been all picked up so that we have no trash at the beach ends. I don't know if the policy has changed, but it was a real mess. Obviously, the wind was tremendous uh, oh, last. Oh, I thought weekend. they were all picked up. No, they're not all picked up. Okay. I, didn't, I don't know what we're doing. So, OK, thank you. Blanche Adams, and now I'm representing the Upper Township Business Association, a resident of Steelman Town. I just wanted to speak briefly in support of the farmer's market. We're so thrilled as a business association that it may come back to life. Um, Barbara and Bill Zimmerman opened up their home and their farm to us um, a couple of months ago. We got to tour it. Um, we got to hear all about their operations. We talked a little bit about um, a potential farmer's market, so I'm really happy to see that it's coming together. Um, and as Mayor, you said, people come from all over to the farmer's market. What could be better for Upper Township and better for businesses than to have a lot of people coming in? Our bus local businesses can be vendors. Um, We'll bring people in from all over to see what Upper Township has to offer. So Business Association is 100% behind it. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Hi, I'm Barbie Harris. I live on Butter Road. Um, I am familiar with the sheep farm. I think it's a fabulous idea. I'm thrilled to death. You guys are all in support of it. And as much as it's going to benefit the community, the township, and they don't have to come to the township, but they're doing it out of courtesy. I think it would be really cool if we could waive any application fees because we're going to be benefiting it as um, residents that he has to pay to the zoning or planning board if that's a consideration. Um, do you know what I mean? Well, we normally only waive fees for charitable organizations. But you're going to be benefiting from the entire township is going to benefit from. Except for I think it's I, I think it really is. And I mean, it's up to my colleagues, but I think it's more of a mutual partnership because he can utilize our resources for, you know, um, just an idea because the township can really well. benefit from. And this. the problem is, is if you waive the fees for one particular person, then we set precedent for all the other individuals that have to come before the township, uh, before the planning or zoning board. We all so, benefited with shop right there, but we didn't waive their fees. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, I'm just, so, I'm just know, thrilled I, to death. I just thought it was like it might really be a It really is a quagmire. I, I understand what you're saying, um, but you know we have stayed very consistent over the years with you know those that are charitable organizations that have a 501c3, um, and then we also have in, in, in instances entertain for veterans, especially those that are disabled. In fact, a number of the items that were um, passed this evening were um, uh, homeowners tax uh, re refunds or, or elimination because they're wounded uh, veterans. So, you know, they're, they're the folks and they're the individuals that we have, you know, stayed in line with, you know, when it comes to that kind of thing, so. Okay, I just have something else I want to talk to you about. I'm kind of disappointed in this in this whole thing with the Second Amendment um, supportive document that you guys are creating because 
The issues in the township have never been partisan. We have issues of we take care of the township. And bringing something so partisan and divisive in um, that you have no control over, like it, you have, we have no enforcement arm, um, and just saying, oh, we support this part of the Constitution. Yeah. I, I don't know that it's a, I mean, I don't mean to interrupt you. I, I didn't vote for it because I thought it was a partisan issue. I just thought it was an individual, no matter whether, whatever party you were, I thought it was your right as a resident, uh, your right as a citizen of the United States to bear arms. Well, of course I stated, it is. I it's everybody's it. right. No, you know, I know of course it is. I, I, I don't think it's partisan at all. I, I do. Okay. Well, everybody's and entitled to their opinion. Exactly. So I'm going to give you mine. I think it's very partisan issue. That's why you have clapping on one side and clapping on, not clapping on the other side or the back and forth kind of thing. So I, I believe it visualizes itself as a partisan issue. And our issues in the township have never been partisan. And that disappoints me, okay, because we're a very cohesive, kind, friendly township. Okay, the second thing, um, I would rather see you spend time on researching what to do with climate change and saltwater intrusion and finding advanced planning ideas for how we're going to provide um, drinking water and sewer, sewage systems when the wells and septic systems start failing from rising seawater. Okay? That's another one of my concerns. Okay, hold on. And if you are going to go through with this addendum s celebrating the Second Amendment, I would like you also to um, celebrate the Equal Rights Amendment for Women. And I would also like you to include in there that um, all protesters at abortion clinics need to remain 100 yards away from the clinic. The, the, the no, we don't have one. But you don't have the right to enforce gun laws either. So it's just as moot. It'll be taken under consideration. I, I don't know how to respond to that at this point. So Good. Thank you. Now, we're not going to go back and banter back and forth here. <laughs> Hello, gentlemen. My name is Drew Ankney from Wildwood. I am a representative of Cape May County 2A Sanctuary. Just want to state for the fact that we're a nonpartisan organization. Uh, and we are representing here today a number of your constituents that sent in their resolutions that were able to come and be present for you today. Um, just wanted to go over the fact that uh, criminals, by definition, do not follow laws. So the fact that you continue to, uh, or people, individuals continue to uh, pass laws, they only really affect the law-abiding citizen as opposed to the criminal. Um, so I just wanted to state that for the fact and the record um, and go over some of the instances where red flag laws come into play and they violate the Constitution. Um, not only the Second Amendment, but also the uh, the Fourth Amendment, the Fifth Amendment, the Sixth Amendment, I mean, the, the violates due process, violates the First Amendment, because police are now looking for statements made online. Uh, sorry, I wasn't really prepared to speak tonight, but uh, it is. Well, let, let's just say that that the Second Amendment uh, w was voted on tonight, so you don't have to go into too much detail on anything else. Um, I happen to be a pharmacist, and we use red flags to help prevent the spread of opiate uh, abuse. So red flags, in some instances, have good, good things, uh, and you know it's not necessarily what's right or what's wrong. If there's a way of preventing anybody that shouldn't have a gun with a red flag, then it's probably not a bad thing. So. <clears throat> Well, regardless, thank you for we standing today. And in, we use red flags in my profession all the time. And, and, and part of it is, is we don't want people going from state to state. We don't want them to go to multiple positions. You know, so th there are th that, that type of, I don't know if you, you call it, maybe a system. You know, sometimes it has effect. A red flag in your profession does, doesn't constitute an illegal search, search and seizure. No, it doesn't. But anyway. I, I don't want to go back and forth. You know, the, the thing, I, I think um, all five of us felt very strongly that 
that we do believe in the Second Amendment, that there, there is the right to bear arms. Uh, we haven't said you shouldn't follow the rules in New Jersey, background checks and everything else, you know, that, that's still a part of this whole thing. So, um, you know, for those that, that don't agree, I, I understand that. And for those that do, um, you know, <laughs> we're not taking it to the max either, so. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. We don't, no. I give up on that. All right, is there anybody else that would like to address the Township Committee? All right, it appears that we've exhausted um, the folks that wanted to come before the... No, no, there's no sense in re repetitiveness. And I, I do really appreciate everyone coming this evening. And, and I know my, I can speak for my colleagues. Hearing from everyone is very important to us. It does help us make decisions not only today, but, you know, sometimes in the future when we, we address issues and, you know, we, we talk about th the individuals that have appeared before the Township Committee. So thank you all for that and thank you for having, and I'll say the courage to get up and, and state your views and, and state your claims before the Township Committee. So with that, I will make a motion to close the public uh, comment portion of the meeting, turn to Committee Coggins and entertain a motion to go into executive session. I hereby move that a resolution be incorporated into the minutes authorizing the Township Committee to enter into an executive session for the following matters pursuant to the Open Public Meetings Act. The matters are contract negotiations for J.A. Montgomery for bond counsel, for the conflict municipal prosecutor, for the substitute municipal court judge, for triad associates, litigation and potential litigation on the tax appeal for BL England and personnel. I also include in my motion the estimated time and the circumstances under which the discussion in closed session can be disclosed to the public as follows. It is anticipated that the matters discussed in closed session may be disclosed to the public upon the determination of the Township Committee that the public interest will no longer be served by such confidentiality. With respect to employment and personnel matters, such discussions will be made public if and when formal action is taken or when the individuals involved consent that it can be made public. With respect to contract negotiations, such matters will be made public when negotiations have ceased and there is no longer a reason for confidentiality. With respect to litigation matters, such discussions will be made public when litigation is complete and the applicable appeal period has expired. Second, would you call the roll? Mr. Barr? Yes. Mr. Coggins? Yes. Mr. Corson? Yes. Mr. Young? Yes. And Mayor Plummer? Yes. Thank you all for coming this evening. Please drive safely and have a great week.